In this lesson, we will study graphs of polynomial functions. We begin with the definition of a polynomial function. Um, here we have a polynomial function of degree n in the variable x is a function of this form. p of x is equal to a sub n times x to the power of n plus a sub n minus 1 times x to the power of n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2, please notice the pattern, times x to the power n minus 2 plus a sub n minus 3 times x to the power of n minus 3 plus etc plus a sub 1 times x to the power of 1 plus a sub 0. Each one of these a sub n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, we call it a sub i. Each one of those is a real number, so these are real number coefficients, okay? All of your a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, and so forth are all real number coefficients. And it's important that a sub n, though, is not equal to 0. You know, 0 is a real number, but we do not want to let a sub n be 0, or else it would wipe out this whole first term, okay? And another important uh, property of a polynomial function is n must be a whole number, a whole number. So n must be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so forth. So these uh, n values here, right, are not allowed to be um, like 1 half or 1 third, no fractional exponents, no negative exponents. They must be whole number exponents. Now, what we must understand is that the behavior of the graph of a polynomial function is due largely to the value of the coefficient a sub n. The value of a sub n, this um, leading coefficient here, um, has major impacts on what the graph of the polynomial function uh, will look like. And also, the parity of um, this n value here on this first term. When we say parity, we mean whether it's even or odd, okay? Whether this leading term uh, has even degree or odd degree, okay? So for that reason, because the, the graph of the polynomial function, the graph and how it will behave depends largely on uh, the leading coefficient and the parity or the evenness or the oddness, I guess, of this n value, we say that this is the dominating term, or many times called the leading term, dominating or leading term. And this dominating or leading term um, basically will determine how the graph of this polynomial function will behave, okay? A sub zero here is your constant term, okay? That's your constant term, and therefore uh, is your uh, y-intercept of the graph. If you let x be 0, right, every term that has an x basically will go to 0, right? If you let x be 0, all of this is wiped out, if you will, all of it, all of it, all of it, and the only thing that will remain is a sub 0 if you let x be 0, right? So this is your the y-intercept of the graph. That's really important um, when we start to graph these polynomial functions. So you can go ahead and I think it'll be a good idea to add these to your notes here. Um, don't forget um, what I mentioned early, earlier that a sub n is your leading coefficient. Leading coefficient. Okay? Now as we study the graphs of polynomial functions, um, we must know that the domain is always going to be all real numbers. Unless otherwise specified, unless otherwise specified, the domain of polynomial function is all real numbers. The graphs of uh, polynomial functions um, extend indefinitely to the left and to the right. Also, the graph of a polynomial function, this is important, is always a smooth, continuous curve with no sharp corners. A smooth, continuous curve with no sharp corners. Remember that for us, a continuous curve implies that you can get the whole graph without lifting up your pencil. Now we will study something called extrema. Now, in general, the highest point um, 
at kind of like at a peak in the graph, the highest point at a peak is known as a local maximum point. And the lowest point in a valley, if you will, is known as a local minimum point. So if you look at this graph that I sketched for you, this point right here, P sub 1, is actually considered a local maximum point. But it's not the only one. Here's another local maximum point. Here, this is considered like a little valley, if you will. And so this point here is a local minimum point. Now, it's very important that you understand that this is, while this is called a local maximum point, and it's an ordered pair, it's an ordered pair, um, the local maximum value is a real number. The value, the local maximum value is simply y sub 1. Okay, it's the it's the y value. The local maximum point is an ordered pair, but the local maximum value is the real number uh, y sub one. Here, this is the lo another local maximum point, but the local maximum value is y sub two. And here, the local minimum point is this ordered pair, right? Um, x sub 3, y sub 3, but the local minimum value is simply y sub 3, okay? So just make sure you understand the difference. Um, a local maximum or a local minimum point is an ordered pair, but a local maximum or local minimum value is the y value. Now, this is the highest, absolute highest point on the graph. We call it the absolute maximum point. The absolute maximum point, we call y sub 2 the absolute maximum value. So all, although p sub 1 and p sub 2 are both local maximum points, p sub 2 is the absolute maximum point. And before we move from this um, topic, please note that a function may have more than one absolute maximum or absolute minimum point, but only one absolute maximum or absolute minimum value. Okay, so this curve, imagine if this curve here came all the way up right here to the same height, then there would be, you know, more than one absolute maximum point right here let me see if I can make this I know it's gonna be sloppy but um, just so that you can get the idea if it came up right here right and then and then went down both of these would be an absolute maximum point absolute maximum point they're the same height absolute maximum point but there's only one absolute maximum value both of these share the same y value so you can only have one maximum uh, absolute maximum or ab absolute minimum value, but you may have more than one absolute maximum or absolute minimum point. One of the last things we want to uh, make sure that we emphasize in this lesson is that the x-intercepts of the graph of a polynomial function are also called the real zeros. Okay, so when we mention x-intercepts of the graph of a polynomial function, we may also refer to them as the real zeros, the real zeros um, of the function, okay? Now, this is very important. The graph of a polynomial function of degree n will have, at most, n x-intercepts or n real zeros, okay? For example, this cubic function, because it's degree n, oh, first of all, please notice that this is a polynomial function, okay? Um, it does fit that definition that we mentioned in the very beginning. Um, your leading coefficient is one, your constant term is five, and this n value up here, three, is a whole number. So this is definitely, uh, definitely a polynomial function. Um, this degree here is three, and so therefore, this function will have at most three x-intercepts or three real zeros. Now, it could only have one. That's possible. It can have um, at most three. This is actually the graph of f here. And notice that there is only one. Here, I'm going to highlight it. 
there is only one x-intercept, one real zero, if you will, right? But this is saying that it can have at most, right, at most three, right? But in this case, there's only one. For this quadratic function, and this is a polynomial function, for this quadratic function with leading coefficient positive 1, constant term negative 4, and even degree 2 here, um, this, says, this here says that this function here, this quadratic function, will have at most two zeros, two real zeros, or two x-intercepts. And if you inspect the graph, analyze the graph, it does indeed have two distinct um, real zeros or two x intercepts. Now consider this one. This is a quartic, a quartic polynomial function. Um, and we know it will have at most four x intercepts or four real zeros at most. But when you look at the graph of this function, the graph uh, looks something like this. Okay, it is going downward, right? Going downward. I know that because of the negative leading coefficient. I know it's end behavior because of a negative leading coefficient with an even degree like four. So the end behavior has to be like this. And the y-intercept is negative two. So really, this graph here or this function um, has no real zeros has no real zeros. It does not have any x-intercepts.